All right, welcome back to the program. Tosi Oshukoya is joining me right now. He's the Chief Executive Officer at Comisio Partners Asset Management. Hello, Tosi, and welcome to the program. Hello, Nancy. Nancy, good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Now, Tosi, let me get your reaction to the macro impulses that we've been seeing so far since the last time we spoke. Since the last time we spoke, a lot of things have changed. <laughs> Inflation now is at about 26%. FX rate now is hovering around the 1,000 naira range. Either it's 990 or 993. Um, I don't know why that is happening, but it's still uh, a low for uh, the naira. We're seeing a budget 2024 that has been announced by the Minister of uh, Economic Budget and Economic Planning. I think 26 trillion naira uh, projection yeah. are for uh, next year. So speak to me about these uh, macro impulses that we've seen since the last time we spoke just briefly like a minute all right so first of all we've seen the increased activities of speculators in the market mm. and that has driven naira to almost to almost 1300 but mm. again thank god for increased communication strategy from the federal government what we've seen is that that is waning and i'm hoping that that will continue until that money actually comes into the country I think secondly, also what we've seen is the fact that we're beginning to see some collective or collaborative um, activities of the, the monetary and the fiscal side uh, of the government. Um, largely, I would think that we shouldn't just talk about what we plan to do, but we should actually do it. What do I mean by that? So if we expect that in the next couple of months before the year runs out, that money would come into this market, from the, the 10 billion securitized you know, funds or dividends from NLNG, what must happen is if that money doesn't come in, we are going to see a rebound of what has happened in the last few months. So it's good for us to give a forward guidance, but we must back it up with execution. Mm, okay. In a highly volatile environment as we have right now, that the Naira is really on a free fall, which is more important, especially for asset managers like you? Should I protect my wealth or should I go for growing my wealth? Which is more important now? I think what has happened is that a lot of investors, both local and foreign investors, they've lost confidence in the economy. Mm. And that is why you would see a lot of people or investors trying to protect their wealth and protect their portfolio. So if we are beginning to see some activities by way of communications from the federal government, that they will come to you know, halt the free fall of Naira, we might begin to see some confidence coming back into the market. So for investors that are you know, apprehensive about what would, could happen in the foreseeable future, my advice is for them to just you know, hold, stay calm, because I believe in this government. I believe that what they've said they're gonna do, they will do it. So we begin to see some respite coming into the market. So if that happens, if that $10 billion, if it comes into the market, what it will do is to restore some level of confidence into the market. And that's what we want. If you're able to clear the backlog and at the same time strengthen the supply channel of efforts into the country, whether through your short-term strategy or your medium to long-term strategy. And for each one of these strategy positions, that you are going to take, you must continue to improve on your communications you know, uh, strategy. You know, in developed markets, for instance, in the US, Fed would come out to give a forward guidance. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they do the forward guidance is for them to bring calm into the market and to let everybody know that this is what they are planning mm -hmm. to do in the back end, yeah. all right? So that when they actually do it, and in most times they do it, when they actually do it, they have given you a forewarning that this is what they plan to do. Mm. And I believe that we should adopt the same strategy. That way, you will not see investors be apprehensive. Mm. Those who have dollar obligation, they will not be apprehensive because they believe that there are some actions that have not just been told, but they are actually going to be executed. Mm. So for me, I think that we should remain calm. I think that Naira would strengthen into the rest of the year. And we might see it, you know, relatively stable between 900 and 1,000. Hmm. That's, that, that's scary, yo. <laughs> Don't say that's scary, yo. <laughs> 
Now that I want thousand, if that is your focus, that is really scary. That is really uh, huge, especially for a country that is import dependent. But speak to me about so, how the how the weak naira is really impacting investments. What what are your clients so it's, it, talk, talking it's about? Really yes, and what categories yeah, of what categories of investment have been severely battered as a result of this naira uh, depreciation? I think um, that to be those who have invested or kept money in Naira, unfortunately, mm. they have been badly beaten. And I'll put it into perspective. So if you bought, a, if you bought, I mean, if you, if you had Naira when Naira dollar was at 900 and it got to 1,300, if you dollarize that Naira investment, okay, at the time, you would have lost almost about 40 to 50%. So those who had investment in Naira, surely they've been beaten. But with what has happened in the last few days or a couple of weeks, Naira's strengthening, you could begin to see some of them, you know, clawing back some of the losses. So that clawback, as far as I'm concerned, would continue until a position where we believe that Naira will become relatively stable. Going forward, what I would advise, as we go into the end of the year, you must decide not to take any risk at this moment. It's important for you to keep your money in maybe fixed deposits or investments or fixed placement with asset managers. Because taking any risk now, particularly now that it appears everywhere is very volatile, you see what is happening in geopolitical area, right? Um, I mean, nobody expected that Israel and you know Palestinian would have you know any uh, war that broke recently so again it's important for us at this time as we move towards the end of the year that we remain very calm and invest in risk free assets mm. so what are the risk free assets you are talking about that's one then number two uh, from the from your answer earlier uh, it, it's actually a loss for people keeping their investments in naira don't you think that because of just what you said that is also why we are seeing the naira having a free fall because everyone is going to the dollar to s protect their wealth the little naira you have you just go and buy the dollar and keep you know so, so don't you think that is also fueling uh, a naira uh, depreciation then the other the other uh, 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 question uh, which i asked yeah of course when people lose confidence in their currency the next thing they resort to would be to invest in foreign currency it's a very simple you know uh, economics yeah? however for me what i would advise is there seems to be a semblance of calmness in the market a federal government is doing something about it the central bank is also doing something about it i think we need to believe in what they're planning to do hopefully that would bring some respite into the market to protect your investment going into the end of the year i would advise strongly that you still invest in naira denominated as a result of what has happened because if you go into dollar now especially at 1200 and for some reason the actions that they are planned i mean they've laid down that they're going to execute if those strategies are fully executed, NERA will strengthen. So you can imagine, Nancy, if you go into the market now to buy at 1,200 and federal government actually had that money come into the market next month, you could possibly lose about 20% of your money or of your portfolio. So what I would advise right now is to continue to believe in the potentials of what would happen in the next one or two months and keep your money with asset managers or keep your money with um, with a bank mm -hmm. if you do that okay what you're doing is you are not just reacting to the volatility in the market you're staying calm to see what could possibly happen in november and december another area that you could invest in would be in property what has happened in the last 10 years and we've done so many research with this that property over a long period would always outpace or outperform inflation. So if you go into the property market, for instance, especially in a country where we have dirt of you know, affordable homes, or we have you know, a very huge uh, housing gap, 
what you tend to see is there will be consistent and continuous demand for housing. So you could go into, into the property area. Equities market, however, outside of the banking stocks that have done very well, mm. if you look into the FMCGs or you look into the conglomerates or the industrial goods, they've not done uh, pretty well. For instance, uh, MTN came out with a result a few days ago, and you could see that they were badly beaten, obviously because of the devaluation. It's interesting that when the banks are enjoying the benefits of the devaluation, some other sectors are suffering from it. Mm. So when you want to invest into the end of this year, it's important to you to stay in asset areas that would not be susceptible to volatility in the market. Okay, very quickly, Tosi. Um, uh, how do, how uh, does this affect um, this volatile Naira? How do you think it's affecting savings? Because I know that many Nigerians, many Nigerians at least, they have their monies in their savings account. And you receive them going to the banks every day. Give me 2,000. Give me 5K. Give me this. So they're doing transfers. How do you see this Naira volatility impacting on savings? And what do you think, what is the advice to people keeping their monies in savings accounts uh, right now? That's one. And the second question is, with all what we're saying about devaluation, depreciation, is there a, a, a positive, at least for even investors, can the de, uh, devaluation... Devaluation and depreciation. Can depreciation, um, can it positively, can an investor make uh, gains from depreciation in any, in any way? I, I, I know that perhaps if you are invested in foreign assets, you might definitely be, you know, but is there a way for those of us in Nigeria that are investing in Naira can possibly get gains from depreciation if there's anything like that? Well, I'm not sure what your second question is. If you are asking me to encourage people to rent seek by investing, <laughs> by speculating on the Naira. But let me address the first one. So the first one, obviously what has happened, in fact, when we did the numbers, because we have a very strong research team in commercial partners. So we decided to take, uh, to measure the savings culture in Nigeria over the last two decades. And it's been on a positive trajectory. Nigerians love to save. Mm. And that's why you see some fintechs actually doing very well because of the savings culture. So no matter what happens to the currency, you would still expect or see that positive trajectory. However, when you continue to save, you are saving for a future aspiration or goal. So the question is, over the long period, what you're saving for, will it help to add perform or pace inflation. In most cases, it doesn't no. actually. Yeah. But what you need to do uh, is you need to ask yourself, why are you saving? If you begin to see a situation where the narrow that you're saving in, okay, depreciates as a result of depreciation of the currency, then you probably need to change that strategy. And I'm not encouraging people to go into speculating, you know, mm. that they, uh, the position and the dollar and that's why when you look at the speculation activity you have those that are rent seeking and you have those that are trying to protect their portfolio their wealth okay by reason of the depreciation of the Naira. and you cannot blame people for doing that and that's why we're clamoring that uh, we're also applauding the fact that the federal government had come and said that or oh, they are expecting this that communication must continue and it must be backed with action Mm. For the second question, okay. when if you're if you are asking that, oh, should you go into dollars to protect yourself? I mean, you will be speculating, and for me, I don't encourage speculation because, especially because of the volatility. Mm. What I would advise is you seek professional uh, advice. advice from experts that will guide you through the remaining uh, uh, months in this year into next year. I particularly think that 2024 would bode very well for us, not only in Nigeria, globally, because I expect Fed to ease ICANN, and I expect that by so doing, that could potentially help the emerging market. And Nigeria, we're going to get our acts right. The 10 billion is just a short-term strategy. What we need to do medium to long term is to begin to plan for one, improved export earnings in this country. There's no way we would not suffer for what has happened or what we're going to do 
in, in November, December with that 10 billion if we don't strategically position for how we're going to you know, get more export earnings in the next few years. Mm -hmm. We need to address oil theft. That's just about 1.4 million barrels. We need to ramp up to 1.8 or 2 million barrels. That could potentially bring another 10 to 15 billion dollars annually if prices of crude oil still elevated at this level. Then we have lithium. We have the mineral resources in this country, Nancy, that we need to begin consciously and politically begin to harness how we can make so much money from those areas. I think that if we get all of those things right, in the next two to three years or five years, we might see a massive accretion to our reserves. Mm. A massive, a massive accretion to our reserves, which will definitely make our Naira stronger. So we need to do a lot of fundamental things to make our Naira stronger. I wish we could continue this interview, but we will schedule another time because I have so many other questions to ask you. But I will take your prediction and your forecast. You're saying Naira will be around 900 to 1,000 Naira. So let's see, let's see what will happen. But thank you very much, uh, Tosin, uh, for joining me on the show uh, today. Thank you, Nancy. Talk to you soon. I've been speaking with right. Tosi Oshukoya, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Commercial Partners Asset Management, and we've been talking about Naira uh, depreciation, what you really need to know. So uh, what is enough for the wise? Let's quickly, uh, we will be taking the news next. The SAIT reports is next. I'll see you all again tomorrow. God willing, be the best it can be. I'm going to change that you need to see. I am Nancy Naji. Bye now. Thank you.